Hello and welcome to Chocolate Games Match Preview of West Ham United against Arsenal. Can the Hammers make a treble over the Gunners this season? Gonzo, can you kick us off with your thoughts on Arsenal, please? Yeah, they uh, they had a win, didn't they? Got a win against Liverpool, which uh, was a was a really important win for them, I think. Got them back into the title race. Uh, I think had they have lost, they would have been eight points behind, uh, I think, if I read that correctly, uh, which would have been too much, I think, particularly with uh, Liverpool. Liverpool are a funny club because they, they're in form, they are, but then the manager's done that weird thing of announcing that he's leaving. So we don't know how that's going to impact them. You certainly feel that Man City uh, are just about to get into their stride with De Bruyne back. Um, uh, you know, Foden's obviously in good form. And, and that's without Haaland really firing on all cylinders yet. So I think City can get even better. So Arsenal could not afford to drop behind at all. I, I I think, you know, they. It, it depends. We'll only know at the end of the season. Um, but at the moment, it appears that they've invested a lot of money and not got any better. So, I mean, it's last season, they were the second best team. I don't know, they were the best team for most of the season. They had a, had a little dip, didn't they? They, they had, a, funny enough, another not great result against Liverpool. I think possibly Everton beat them uh, when Sean Dyche came in and then... Um, and then they had a really unfavourable result against us as well. And it was sort of a sequence of results that stopped them winning the title. So um, I wouldn't say that necessarily they, they bottled it. Yeah, maybe I would. But um, they had they had it within their clutches, their grass. They were the second best team last season. They really, after that big spend up, need to be at least the second best team this season. If they if it's the third best team, then it, it won't be so good. But I mean, they're an amazing team, Gio. You know, the, they, they do seem to have every facet of the game sorted out. They seem to be, a, you know, niggly and nasty in defence and sort of robust in defence, attritional defenders who don't mind having a scrap. They've got a very balanced midfield and, and they've got some good good attackers, even guys coming off the bench like Trossard comes on and he's effective. So I, I do think they're really well balanced. All the facets of the game are covered with Arsenal, I feel. Yeah, I um, can't disagree too much, really. I think the only thing I will say is they had a big gap to bridge. So when they first started spending a lot of money, which was a couple of years ago now, the gap between them and Manchester City was was quite big. They weren't even in a, in a title. Well, they finished eighth. They finished eighth in the Premier League. That's how far away from the title race they, had, they, they were. And I think yes, yesterday, last season, they almost progressed too quickly to some extent. They went from nowhere in a title race to the favourites for the title and they ended up losing it to Manchester City. But what that does is it increases expectation overnight, which is, well, now your title contenders, go do it. And they bridged the gap really quick. And I think while they spent more money this summer, Man City also spent money, Liverpool also spent money. So it is difficult to get back up there. In last season, they had the advantage of Liverpool having an off-season. They were nowhere near the title race. So it was just them in Man City. Well, this one, you've got Liverpool in there. And you've got a couple of say, surprise packages. You've got Aston Villa and Spurs, who are not far away. I, I do feel it's a three-club title race, yeah. and then two teams fighting for fourth out of Spurs and Villa. And then the rest of us, which includes Man United, ourselves, Wolves, Chelsea... Brighton, we're Newcastle, we're all vying for six, and then that bit in between ourselves and Bournemouth. There's almost like three leagues in the top half of the table. And I think it's difficult for Arsenal because they're not really doing anything wrong. In fact, they're doing a lot right. The problem is Man City are just that bloody good. And I know at the minute they're level on points for Man City, but when you're watching all three teams at the minute, Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal, you feel there's only one winner at the at this point and it's City because they've got form for it. They just turn up at this point in the season and just tear off and they, they don't really drop any points. And, you know, they, they've been at the top of the table and it feels like City are having a poor season, yet they're right there. And it feels like they've been quite quiet, but they're still there. No Haaland, no De Bruyne, no problem. They're both back now and Phil Foden's knocking in a hat-trick for them. And if you're an Arsenal fan or Liverpool fan, you must be thinking, what, what can we do here? Yeah. Because like I said, last season, Liverpool dropped off. The seasons before that, Arsenal weren't there. Man City haven't dropped off. They just don't. They just don't have a bad season where it gives someone else the opportunity to win the title. They're, it, they're not. They're always there. So I think Arsenal are doing a lot of things right, but it's like, well... It's still not enough. I do think I agree with you completely, though. I was really looking forward to that game on Sunday, Arsenal Liverpool, and then when it came on, I wasn't that bothered because we just got smashed by Man United, so I was a bit grumpy. But by the second half, I was admiring what Arsenal were doing a lot. Actually, I thought tactically, I thought Arteta 
got it bang on. And not many teams get one up on Klopp in the dugout when it comes to tactics. But I thought Arteta was 10 out of 10 in that day. The way they were almost employing a low block at times, the way they had Kai Havertz and a false nine, they were playing like double number 10s, playing through the middle. I thought what Arteta did against um, Klopp was just sensational. But while you get that win, you've got to go on and win this one and the next one and the next one. Otherwise, it's, it's not necessarily pointless, but it's one step forward, two steps back. Do you think they'll go on and win the title, Gonzo? No, no. I, I think Arsenal are going to have to wait for others to fail before they can succeed. And you know what? That That's it's very much in sport. Sometimes the number one contender in boxing has to wait for the champion to retire. Um, because at the moment... Klopp, is, Klopp so, and Guardiola are better than... So Arsenal, Arsenal are waiting for this 115 charges to... The 115 charges get and, dealt with and Klopp. And Klopp, and Klopp. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. For them to succeed, they will need the others to fail because they're not quite good enough. But, um, but I mean, yes, they are. They are they're up there, as you say. It's the top three and, and they are firmly and squarely um, the, the third best team. And you know what? And they love Arteta. Uh, I think, you know, I think they... Whilst he's, he's annoying for opposition fans to watch him on a touch time, he's playing your team. And I imagine if he's your manager, um, you probably, well, not warm to him, but you, you probably really admire that he's fighting for your club, you know, and I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot there. And, and look, I mean, he's he's won no more than Wenger, has he? But, you know, it was obviously Wenger out um, and it's very much Arteta in. So um, I think that's, that's part of it. I think they probably see progression under him. And they probably think that going forward, he's going to achieve something. And whilst he might not be as good as Klopp now, Maybe one day, or, or Guardiola, maybe one day will be. And I think they're probably looking at it and thinking, OK, you know, our, our time will come. But I, I don't think it'll be this season, though. I agree with that. I mean, Klopp didn't exactly rock up and win a league in his first couple of seasons either. He had to build slowly and wait and wait for Man City to not drop off, per se. But Liverpool had to be so good that they barely dropped any points in order to win the league. That's the that's where Arsenal got to get to. And like you said, next season possibly prevents, presents a really good opportunity if Man City get punished fairly, which essentially you're looking at relegation and Klopp disappears as he's planning on. And you have to then look at Arsenal and oh, they become favourites just like that straight away. You go, well, yeah. you're now favourites for the title. What are you going to go do? Do you think they could possibly win the Champions League? Just so you know, I know you won't be aware of this. Well, maybe you are. They've got Porto in the next round. I didn't know. I didn't know. You're right. Um, yeah, I think they, obviously they can beat Porto and, and will beat Porto. No, no, no doubt about yeah. that at all. Um, the, the strength of the Premier League is ridiculous now. It, it really is. I, I would take all almost all top half Premier League teams to beat a lot of the teams in Europe. And I don't mean, listen, I'm not suggesting for a moment that Brentford go and beat Bayern Munich. I'm not suggesting that because there are still some clubs like Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, who can really flex their you muscles. You haven't looked at the league table for a while, have you? What? Which one? The German one? Brentford. Oh, Brent well, no, all right. No, no, no. I, I, this, yeah, what? They're not top 10, yeah. Uh, no, but, you know, no. Actually, I have, funny enough. I've, I look at the, uh, the league table quite a lot. It's, it's, it's not, um, it's, more my, it's more my memory retention. You don't scroll down, do you? You don't need to anymore. Last season, you have to go down to... Last you know, West Ham fan, I I don't well, I guess I've look, got to look uh, got to look lower than sixth now, haven't I? But uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? When you're a big club like West Ham, a massive like us, you don't tend to scroll down um, in the league. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I just think yeah, yeah Arsenal will steamroll Porto. I think they will. Can they win the Champions League? Yes, they can win the Champions League. They absolutely can. I I completely agree because the Premier League it requires them to be consistent at the top of the game, week in, week out. And even if they do that, they still might not win the Premier League. They could go on and win all but three of their games this season and still not win the Premier League. But in the Champions League, it's well, it's a two-legged affair, of course. But when it comes to the finals, it's 90 minutes. And who's the best teams left in the Champions League? Well, Manchester City, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. And you, you, would you fancy Arsenal in a one-off game against them? You, you would. They might not be the favourites, but they can certainly do it. They might only win... If they were to play the game five times, they might only win it twice. But that's yeah. that can be enough on the night, that oh, that chance to win it. So I do think they could win the Champions League. And I do wonder if they were to slip up in the league between now and later, the latter stages of Champions League, you might find Arsenal are able to switch their attention to that competition and say, this is our priority now. We can't win the title, but we can win this. So we're going to rest our players on, on the weekend. We're still going to get top four. 
because we will yield enough points with rotated sides in order to stay in the top four. That's fine. We've got a Champions League next season sorted, but we can go and win this because there is a bit of pressure on Arteta to deliver something. And that's only two competitions left for them. We knocked them out and then Liverpool knocked them out of the, the FA Cup. So it's Champions League and title if they want silverware this season. And I'm not sure Penta League is going to be the one. Right. Last question on Arsenal then. Please, Jim Mayer, please. Well, I like the centre-backs, Gio. Uh, Gabriel and Saliba. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. I do like I really do. I really do. I think I think Ben White. I'm not talking picking picking defenders particularly, but um, I really like what what he's what what's ha- happened to him actually. Um, there's so much talent there though. There is so much talent. I I think you know as I say, whenever as he Trossard coming off the bench, I think he looks you know absolutely tremendous. And Odegaard, you know, you could sort of, sort of footballer you could watch play all day. But yeah, some tremendous players, Gia. Yeah, I absolutely love Odegaard. I, I think do you remember when he went to Real Madrid and it was it was like wow, why are you paying 16. this much money? Yeah, why 16, yeah. what's going on here? And then he went to Arsenal initially and it was a bit like oh, he looks all right, but he, but he's just developed into one of the best in the Premier League. I, I enjoy watching him play and, and I'm gonna have to wash my mouth out after this one. But there's mm. been a few Arsenal players over the years I've enjoyed watching play oh, football. Yeah. Cesc Fabregas and Santi Cazola were probably two of them. Now I don't think Odegaard's at that level for me. I don't think he's up there with those two. I think Cazola was a special player for me, but he does have that elegance and makes a difficult look easy. And I think a player that can do that is special. And I think Odegaard. I agree with Saliba. I think he's possibly the best centre back in the Premier League. Not just ability, but consistency really see him have a bad game and every week he's eight out of ten for Arsenal when I see them. I, th- I think he's superb at the back there. And Declan Rice, I do think he's made a significant difference to that Arsenal team. Uh, as one of our subscribers said in one of the two previous previews we did, he said Declan Rice has improved Arsenal, but Arsenal have not improved Declan Rice. And I thought it was a wonderful phrase and I couldn't find myself agreeing to it more. The neutrals will disagree with that phrase. I go, oh no, Declan Rice has got better at Arsenal. I'm not sure he has. Um, I think his game's adapted. He doesn't get forward as much as he did at West Ham. Those dribbles aren't there because they're not needed slash not allowed because of the attacking players on the team. Declan Rice is more of a defensive midfielder. But I do think he has made a huge difference to that Arsenal midfielder. And every time I watch Arsenal, bar when he's played West Ham for enough, Rice has just been class. And it's... I, I don't have any emotional feeling towards it. When I first seen it, I used to hate it when he scored that last-minute winner for them. I was like, ah, leave it out. I can't be doing with this. Uh, Luton, I think it was, scored the last minute. I was a bit, oh, n- not, not for me. Turn the TV off. Bad enough now. But now uh, I, that emotional attachment is not there anymore. So I can almost enjoy him to some extent just as a footballer. Anyway, enough about Arsenal. Shall we talk about our team? I think we should. Would you like the team news? Yes, please. Well, it's pretty good news as far as David Moyes is concerned. Vladimir Sufal's available after his suspension. Uh, um, he was available last weekend anyway, were not he? I'm, I've gone, I'm wrong. Gone to, you know, st- I'm technically right. He's still available. Um, he's already served. There you are right. He's actually absolutely puffy he's chest out last week as well. He is, ava- he, he is, he is available and, and so are other Just- players. Just checking you were all listening at home there. Mm. Got you all perked up. Ariola should be okay for this one. David Moyes compared. It was just precautionary. We took him off at halftime against Man United. It wasn't a concussion substitution. It was just precautionary. So Ariola is fine for this one. Mikhail Antonio is back in trading. And the noises are that he could be included in the match day squad on Sunday. So Gonzo, Antonio is available for your selection mm. should you wish to use him. Thank you. Everybody else is fine, bar Lucas Paqueta. While he keeps posting his own photos and videos in training or in the gym usually it is one game too soon and David Moyes has confirmed he should be back in a week or two so this one we think is too soon for Paqueta so you're not allowed to pick him but everybody else is ready and raring to go so Gonzo with that in mind who would you like to see in goal would you like to see a a wounded Ariola or an old Fabianski Um, I'll go with a wounded rather than the aged thank you very much Gio yeah yeah, I completely agree. No reason not to not pick uh, Alfonso Avila. Now you're back for some big decisions for David Moyes here. I think there is. I absolutely it's true. think there is. Two big there... calls. Yeah, and I'm going to make them. Go on. Um, then. Yeah, I, will, well, I will if you'd let me get a word in. Um, I'll, I'll pick Ben Johnson at right back, please. I will uh, have Konstantinos Mavropanos playing against his former club. Um, and I'll have Nafer Gerd next to him and, uh, and Emerson next to him. 
Yep, yeah, completely agree. Same back four for me. Um, Soufal was fortunate to start against Man United. I think he had iffy form and had served his one game suspension, but got to play because Ben Johnson was required elsewhere in the team. So Moyes was able to kick the can of which right back do I select down the road a little bit by selecting both. Yeah, I'm not sure he can do that this weekend. I think he has to make the call of Soufal or Ben Johnson. I think Johnson was really good against Man U, playing right wing. At right back, he also made an error, it depends, but he was involved in a error leading to Man United's third goal. However, I don't lay too much of the blame at his door. But I'd like to see Johnson in. He's in good form at the minute. Get him in there. Martinelli has had a bit of a quiet season, but he looks like he's picking up form at the moment yeah. for them. Tough customer. I'd like to see Johnson. And I agree with your setback pairings. I think they've impressed as a pairing when we've seen them. Mav Panos and Aguirre. And Zuma is just too much cause for concern at the minute, isn't yeah. he? Like broken, Zuma looks even more broken. And he's losing a few battles that he per- perhaps wouldn't have done earlier on in the season. And now, listen, in future previews, I'd rather see Zuma start. But for this one, that's my back pairing. Emerson picks itself. Now, moving into midfield, Gonzo, and more big calls for David Moyes to make, really. He didn't start Phillips against Man U due to match sharpness. And then. Um, well, he didn't look very sharp when he came on, but it's another week in tr- of training for him under his belt in a completely different type of game. Yeah, I'll throw him in. Actually, I'll throw him in. And the reason I would do so is because if we don't have a playmaker, which it seems like we won't, I think then you've got to get as good a passing as you can uh, in, in the middle of the pitch. And I understand <laughs> he's obviously had some uh, Hollywood moments with his passing, let's put it that way. But by and large, in terms of, of ticking over, he's going to be able to move the ball around a lot better than Thomas Suchek. There's a case for Suchek. There really is, because I do yeah. think uh, what Arsenal have done is... is I, I like their blend. They've got the, the skillful players, but they've got some big old players in there as well. So Suchek could well be needed in terms of... I mean, even someone like Kai Havertz, who is their, um, you know, one of their more skillful players. He's a big guy, six foot plus Havertz. And, you know, so, so it might be good to have another, you know, really tall guy in there. But I, I'm just going to go with... Um, possession just to take it because we are going to come under the cosh when we get the ball we're going to need to move it we're not going to have you know a number 10 to try it actually traditionally open them up so the passing's got to be as neat as it possibly can even though it won't be amazing so i'm going to go with phillips uh alvarez and i'm going to go with ward prowse adjusting the ball retention will be better with those three Ooh, we might have a matching 11 i mean surely we do because the, the don't call the me last- shirley uh, the, la- the last position, there's not many options for it, but it, I-, I agree with your midfield and for the exact reasons you gave. I want to see Ward Prowse in that number 10 role, helping Jared Bowen press from the front, because even though I thought Ward Prowse was quiet at Old Trafford, I thought the pressing aspect of his game was fine. It was yeah. there. Um, Alv- Alvarez picks himself possibly the first name on the team sheet at the minute, mm-hmm. certainly one of them. He goes in straight away and that's that. And it becomes Suchek versus Callum Phillips. I beg we don't see both. I, I still have this fear we're going to see all four play on Sunday yeah. and we're going to see a diamond midfield or something. Not Ward Prowse on the left wing. I think that's abandoned, thankfully. That's gone. But I do wonder if he's going to try and squeeze all four in and do something with the midfield so that they can all play it. That's my prediction. But I don't want to see it. Now, Phillips has obviously made two big errors. Um Leading to goals. Yep. Listen, blame. You can decide if Zuma's more to blame or Johnson, but whatever. He was involved, right? Minimum was he was involved. But you can't use that as a reason to bin off a guy that essentially is costing the club, what, three, four hundred grand a week yeah. with his loan fee and wages combined. It's, it's a very expensive loan signing. You can't just bin him off after two, well, two, two games. One game he started, one game he came on. You can't, you have to, we have to get him in the team ASAP. So that you can get his match sharpness up. The only way you get that match sharpness up is by playing games. So you can't just then not play him because his match sharpness isn't up and then complain his match sharpness isn't there. You have to get him in. I think this is a good opposition to get him in for. It's a tough game. He will be busy in there. Alvarez will be busy in there. And it gives Such- it means we have a really good substitute in Thomas Suchet regardless of what way the game's going. Yeah. That leaves three attackers, Gonzo. Give me them. Um, I'm playing Antonio. Uh, I-, I cannot... I do not want to see Bowen through the middle against these guys. I I, I can't see it. It's it'd be like lambs to the slaughter. It really will. Um, and then I'd have the two, obviously the two main guys, Kudus and um, and Bowen, swap constantly. Uh, you know, constantly. 
I don't mean every 30 seconds. It might be quite knackering. But you know, three times a half. That would be lovely. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and yeah, I, that that's what that's what I want to see. Um, we've gone for too many games without Antonio. I I don't think we'll get much out of him. I think we might get ten games out of him this season, Antonio. And uh, and just because, just because I do, it's just my hunch. And and I would like to see this. It's not going to be ideal, but he might just occupy with his strength. It depends what Antonio, you either get Beast Antonio or the one that tries to fall over all the time. Um, or French what... Antonio. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, like it. I like that. Um, it, it should at least occupy. Um, look, basically, either the two centre-backs will be having a real physical encounter or they'll be laughing at him. Either way, they'll be distracted and it should allow um, Bowen and Caduce a little bit more space. I just feel we need that extra attacker up there. Um, what are you, I take it you're not going with that. No, I'm unconvinced by how ready Mikhail Antonio is. Uh, but there's reservations over Calvin Phillips being ready. I think there must be even more reservations over Mikhail Antonio being ready. I want him in the squad and I want to see him come on regardless of what, the, if we need a goal, get him on. If we're defending a lead, get him on to just keep the ball up. I want to see him involved and I'm looking forward to having him back. Um, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I think in football, that is certainly the case. Sometimes it's warranted and sometimes it's done with a lack of merit. Um, uh, I, one of my favourite examples is Pedro Obiang. And sometimes I'll see people say, oh, he was a top midfielder for us. I think, he, he wasn't, though. He was average. <laughs> we just we just think he's a top yes. midfielder because he's no longer with us, right? He's gone away. And I, th- I, I think their there's status, their ability grows as, the absent, as that period grows as well. But I think with Antonio, I do think it is viable. I think he's been brilliant at the start of the season. He was poor, he had a poor period as well. He was he's not been brilliant all season. He has had bad games as well. But there has been a lot of games, and Man United was one of them. I was looking at it, watching. I was thinking we need Antonio back. We need this. A to get Bone out there, but B just. We've been lacking a striker. Now, I know Antonio is not a natural striker, but he has been playing as a striker for quite some time now, and I do think he's made that role his own. Plus, I'm actually quite looking forward to the antonio Caduce combination, which we've not really no, seen. No, we haven't. So I'm quite intrigued Ooh. by the chaos that those two can cause yeah. because both of them have different abilities when it comes to dribbling but the basics are similar in the sense it's it's pace and power and mm. if one can go and somehow the other one can pick up the loose ball it's almost like rugby you just be gaining territory and that, that's bad for as a defense you do not want to you don't like someone running at you so the opposition to have two players that run at you that's not ideal but i would go could do something right bowen up front and Corneille on the left and the reason being I thought bowen was fantastic when we played arsenal before I, as a striker i thought bowen was superb now this is possibly the last game I want to see it. So when we've got Nottingham Forest, Everton, Brentford, I don't want Bowen up front in those games. But this one is possibly the last fixture for a while. I can see Bowen as a striker working. And there's going to be a lot of pressing involved. There's going to be a lot of energy required. And I'm not convinced Antonio's at that point yet. Sure. I think I think Bowen's got it in the tank. So for that reason, that's what I would go for. Anyway, um, Gonzo, before we talk about how you're feeling, we need to look at Manchester City against Everton. I know what you're thinking. What on earth are we doing here? This is a Man City Everton preview. No. But what you can do is get a free bingo card for that fixture on Saturday. And you can win a little bit of money. Real money. It's a gambling app, so you need to be 18 plus. But this video is sponsored and in collaboration with Match Bingo. Combining one of the country's favourite games with the country's favourite sport involving your favourite football teams. Whether you're West Ham, Arsenal, Man City, Everton, or perhaps even support a championship side. It doesn't matter. Your team is on there. Now, there is games that you can pay to play, including the West Ham Arsenal card, and it's £2 per card. So on Saturday, so it's not Saturday, Sunday afternoon, I will be cheering on throw-ins, goal kicks, corners, substitutions, stoppage time. All those things are included on the bingo card. However, I advise that you play the free games in order to get used to the app, work out how it plays, and that is where Manchester City Everton comes in. On Saturday, they, those two face off, and if you download the app using the, the link in the description, you must use that one, or the QR code that's currently on your screen right now, you can download the app for free, you can sign up for free, and you can claim free cards. So there's 10 cards per month for free, and it's 
Manchester City against Everton this weekend, plus bingo goals. And bingo goals this weekend has a bonus pot. There's first line, second line, full house. Also, bonus point for everybody else that gets a full house. So you will get a share of that £100 as well. So play the free game. See if you like it. And if you do, maybe have a little dabble. Two quid a card. Gamble responsibly. Gonzo. Mm. How yep. are you feeling ahead of the game? Are you confident? No. No way. No way. No chance. Not a chance am I feeling confident. I'm um, dreading it, actually. Are you? Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. I, I am feeling most down in the dumps about it, I've got to say. Uh I, I'm I'm seeing a, a team with their tail up. Who I mean, I listened to um, I listened to Mikel Arteta speaking, uh, which, which is a rarity to be fair. But and he he seemed very buoyant by um the, how he managed to counter what Jurgen Klopp had done. He was very very clear that what they were trying to do tactically was working. That they were coming into form, full of high praise for Liverpool, but in as much as to contextualise what they've done. And this herbal team are excellent. What we've done is not easy, but we're getting there and we're doing it. Oh, you know, his, ta his tail was up. Um, we can't muster a shot on goal. And, well, neither uh, could Liverpool. That's why he was happy. No, yeah, one shot on target. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, our, our team is completely and utterly imbalanced. And there are some people getting picked that shouldn't be picked. Um what I'm seeing is that what I'm looking at, at Arsenal, I'm seeing a really well-run club where everyone's pulling in the right direction, where people are playing in the correct positions and they're a team in form. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a bit of a blame game going on at West Ham. I'm seeing players out of position. I'm seeing players that aren't fit playing. I'm seeing um, the best players being injured. And I'm, I'm seeing a, a tactic that is not working without its key players and that the key players are Pakatar and, and or Alvarez. Um, Al no Alvarez, no midfield doesn't function. I know Alvarez there. Um, no Pakistan, the, the, the attack doesn't function. I mean, we, we, you know, we could get a penalty or something. You know, you, Emerson, Emerson might run into from left wing and get hacked down for a penalty. That, that's that sort of thing you're looking at here. Um, no, no, no. Ch two clubs, two teams, chalk and cheese at the moment. One's on the way up, and I think one's on the way down. That, that being said, I do think once we get past this period to get Pakistan back, I think we'll have a run, but not this. I'm not confident for this game. Yeah, I'm not confident either. I, I have got some optimism in me. I'd be pretending if I did it. And I'll, I'll look forward to these games, actually, where we are the underdog. The ones I get more nervous for is the ones where mm -hmm. perhaps the pressure is on us and we're the favourites and we're going to come up against a side that employs a low block. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure we're going to break this team down. But this season, we've beaten Arsenal twice already, once yep. in the Carabao Cup, once in the Premier League. And they can get rattled, Arsenal. Even to, listen, Liverpool was professional from them from start to finish. They stuck to the game plan. Mikel Arteta is right to be singing his own praises if he wanted he to, was. which I've just done Jurgen Klopp. It's a, it's a good achievement. Not many managers do it. Not many managers get one up on Klopp. But I've also seen games this season where they've struggled and sometimes they've got the win, like against Luton, Nottingham Forest. Mm -hmm. But there have been other games where they haven't got that points that they've yielded and the pressure looks like they're getting to them and they come a little bit including against West Ham, where they get a little bit stuck and it feels like they're out of ideas and they're still 20 minutes on the clock, but you get the impression that they're not sure what to do, that, that, that you're defending well against them and they're stuck to get in the box. But I am aware, they, they did not set a record against us when we beat them last time for like the most touches in the opposition box. Yeah, there, was, there, was or something, something. there was something like that, yeah. So there, there was indications that they were doing a lot right. The luck just wasn't falling for them on their day. And it took big performances from our keeper, our defence, or everybody had to play well. And that's going to be the case on Sunday. All 11 players need to play well if we're going to get something against Arsenal. And we've got to hope that two or three of those players don't play well. Um, it's also, I'm also intrigued by how Rice copes in this game. He, uh, he came on in the cup. Don't think he coped very well in that 10, 15 minute spell. I thought he lost the ball easily. I think Alvarez gave him a couple of nice tackles when we played them in the league. I think he was poor in that game, conceded a penalty late on. And it got to the point where the West Ham fans were, were chanting Declan Rice's name and he was walking around smirking. You know, he had a grin on his face because he conceded a penalty on. So it'll be interesting to see how he copes with this one because this is a different test for him. He's played us at their place. He's had a 
cameo in the cup. Now he's going to be starting at the London Stadium for the first time in a league game. So that'd be an interesting event for him. But I don't know. I've got a little bit of optimism going. So I think we'll score. But I'd be lying if I said I think we're going to win. <laughs> I'm just... I don't see it at the minute. No Paquette and no party. The statistics uh, suggest that's the... That's it, isn't it? It's, it is it. It's exactly it. Yeah, it is exactly it. And and, and this, on my final thoughts before I give you my score prediction, um, uh, it's the one... I don't mind David Moyes' tactics being there. I often hear, well, David Moyes has only won because Paquetta did the pass and then could do... Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. You can have that as your tactic. If your tactic is, I'm going to have... 10 men working really hard and then this one guy who's going to be the genius, not suggesting he doesn't work hard, of course he does, but this one guy's going to unlock it. If that's your tactic, right? Can, can I just back you up? Yeah. Um, I, I complained about this, but do you know when Paquetta was injured, I was a bit and could do some bone injured. I was a bit like, well, what we're we going to do now? The star players are missing. And one of our subscribers rightfully said to me, hang on, you always said about Billich with Payet, that was a good thing. So uh, that's fair. I'll take that. But not long after we did that video, and I mean within days, Man City won it really late against someone who they turned it round. And Pep Guardiola said, in the final third, it's no tactics. It's your player's intelligence. He basically said, I can get them outside the box. Yeah. But after that, so I can't do anything. He said, that's something no. the players on the pitch. They have to do something. I can't, I can't tell where the defenders are going to be. I don't know where they're going to be. That's where Borden or yes. Alan De Bruyne are. Bernardo so they need to work out what to do. He said, I'll give them the tactics to get them outside yeah. the 18 yarder. But once you're there, yeah, it's out of my hands. It's up to you lot. It's the intelligence of the players that makes things happen. That's it. That's it. In the they, final third. Yeah, exactly right. There, there's your there's your shape. And then you know, whatever happens, be it a flick, a, a pirouette, or a bona, or a chip um over the top, whatever might happen thereafter. But that's why I've got this guy. And they always say, don't they? Oh, you can't coach that. You know, he's been doing it since he was eight years of age. You not learn that on the training pitch. I think my one gripe is if that's your tactic to rely on this one creative player, where's the understudy? I, I, if that's your tactic, it can't all fall down when they're not there. So that's when I'd like either, either an understudy. You don't have to be quite as good. As you'd understand. It's a, but someone who can still do it. Um, and I think that's, that's the problem uh, for us there. And that is a problem. And, and without the understudy, we just don't have anyone with that G who's the eyes in the back of their head who can see the past that nobody else can. And that's, that's what we're missing. Um, I just think, I, I don't think it's going to be a slaughter. I suspect what we've been discussing this video is what myself and Gio would do if we were in charge, we're not in charge. So what I would expect would happen is that David Moyes will put Antonio on the bench. I think he will try and shut up shop and he'll try and keep it tight for 60 odd minutes. There's been a couple of games this season where I've said that what you've just witnessed is David Moyes' perfect game. All right. We get, he's going to have to have his perfect game now. And then at 60 minutes, 66 minutes. Um, After see, warming uh, up for 10. Exactly right. Um, Mikel and Antonio. Get a goal kick. Exactly right. When all, <laughs> when all the planets align, um, Mikel Antonio will, will, um, We'll limp onto the pitch and uh and then and that's where we'll try and win it. I just ultimately think it's not gonna be enough. I understand Saka might be missing, which which should give us some uh hope quite possibly for this one, but but I still think it's gonna be uh two nil uh to Arsenal. I, I think we've got we've still got star quality. We're missing the genius, but we've still got Caducin Bowen, we've still got players capable of doing something, we've still got two really clinical finishers. The evidence wasn't there at Old Trafford when Bowen got put through in goal and it got blocked by Dalot. However, if he gets a similar situation, I'm still backing him. I'm still backing Jared Bowen to score that. Um, he's been really good this season in those positions. Caduce is really good in those positions. You know, Arsenal, when we beat them previously, you know, it was an Aguirre, long ball to Caduce, bang, almost like a cruff turn on the half volley, yeah. cut inside and put into the far corner. Fantastic. That's what we've got. We've got players capable of doing a bit of magic. So I think we might see a little bit on Sunday, but the problem is they've also got players capable of doing something. And I'm going to say West Ham one, Arsenal two. I, I think I, I think we'll score, but I think we'll get beat. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this preview at home, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Helps out this video, helps out the channel. Makes me and Gonzo really happy. Subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat. And if you wouldn't mind downloading Match Bingo, the link is in the description of this video. That also helps the channel out. It's free to download and it's free to sign up. And there is free to play games on there. You do not have to deposit money. But if you do, 18 plus gamble responsibly. Myself and Gonzo will catch up with you on Sunday.